Hey, welcome back, my humble investors. It's me, E.T., and I got to remind you guys that I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I your financial advisor. I'm just a self-taught investor who likes to talk about stocks. In particular, I like talking about humble. I'll tell you what, last week we survived. We survived the perfect storm last week. It was rough and tough out there. Oh, my goodness. First of all, we had to... President's new uh, tax increase proposal, where he's trying to increase the, the tax rate, in particular capital gains, to move it from 20 to 39% for those people making a million dollars or more per year. A, unfortunately, I'm not in that camp. I wish it was, but I'm not in that camp. A lot of us probably are not in that camp. However, it did have a negative effect on the market. Remember, all three markets, the major markets were affected negatively, went down. NASDAQ, S&P, and the, the Dow. So it had an overall effect. Whatever affects the overall market is definitely gonna affect also the OTC market. So we had that. We had the Go Panda uh, article where they talked about uh, Humble's 2020 financials, in particular, the uh, preferred shares, the, that was it, uh, the B shares, the preferred B shares, and uh, how that there is going to, has the potential or will, or you know, once they come to the outstanding side of the house, move from uh, the, the acquired or from the total to the outstanding side, it's gonna dilute, uh, it's going to do with our shares and that is a true statement but then again you had brian foot who came out and really acknowledged their information that was there letting us know that he owns 45 percent of those shares and that he promised he gave his his word that uh, he will not exercise or, or do anything with any of those until uh, the soonest would be the, the, the end of 2022. So we'll see what happens there. But that still leaves 55% that's out there. And um, we'll just see what happens with that. That's something that really, really we can't control. Then you got to realize that last week, the shorts were making their money last week. You know, the short is going to uh, borrow stocks, sell those stocks as soon as they borrow, and then... Once the price goes down, they're gonna uh, buy those stocks back to close out their position and they're gonna pocket the difference. Uh, we've seen a lot of that last week. Um, and with that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm looking at some of my, my favorite YouTube channels and so forth, and one of them is Mike Jones. And Mike Jones YouTube, he said, he had a, uh, a topic of penny stocks manipulated uh, penny stocks were being manipulated. And uh, I looked at that. He pointed out some very good information, information I did not know. It really is kind of to the point of mind-blowing information that, uh, you know, the list of market makers out there, the broker-dealers out there, uh, they can legally manipulate the OTC market. And they can also um, sell short stocks even if they're they don't have them and what i mean by that you know when you short a stock you're going to borrow the stocks but they could go beyond a hundred percent of what's available out there and uh that explains what happened with game stock you know they how can you short 140% of the, the available shares that are out there? You can only go up to 100%. They went 40% beyond that. And the reason why, it was able to do that because of market makers that are out there. Legally, that can be done. Uh, I would encourage everyone to watch that video. I'll put the link of it, of that video, in my descriptions below, so, uh, description below. So, Definitely take a look at that. Uh, very insightful information. It will uh, enlighten us, and we know that gives us an idea of what happened also last week. 
that was part of that perfect storm that happened last week. One of the things also he talked about, he, you know, he, he, he showed you the five, he showed you actually a lot of the, the, the market makers out there, but he focused in on the top five. That top five market makers out there controlling the vast majority of that, the, the OTC market. And one of those companies was Citadel. So uh, definitely check that, that video out. Very informative. He did a great job. Thanks a lot for that, Mike. Um, I appreciate that. So with all that being said, the drop in the price of the stock, what am I going to do? Bottom line is this here. I'm going to continue to nibble. I'm going to continue to build my position. And the reason why is because I did not lose faith in the company. Uh, my conviction is just as strong as it always has been. But I'm going to continue to do that until the numbers tell me otherwise. And right now, we really have no true numbers. We're not going to get numbers until we start getting those quarterly financial reports. The first quarter is just going to give me an idea, give us an idea, okay, where's the revenue coming from? The second quarterly report is going to give us an idea of our growth rate. Now we can compare the second quarter to the first quarter. Now that third quarter is really going to let us know whether or not that, that growth rate can we keep sustain that for a while. First one's going to let us know where the revenue is coming from. Second one is going to give us an idea of the revenue growth rate. The third one is going to let us know whether or not, yes, we're going to continue to grow like that and how fast we're growing. And the fourth one there, all it's going to do is just continue to do that. So until I see the numbers tell me otherwise, I'm 100% still on board with uh, Humble. And I honestly believe as the revenue starts to come, uh, kick in, like I think it's going to, and you know, it's always possible I could be wrong. I won't know whether or not I'm wrong until we start looking at these financial reports. But the probabilities are, based upon everything that we see that's going on within the company, that we're gonna be able to uh, have some great revenue from a lot of different sources, and we're gonna, we're gonna be at a very, very fast growth rate. Uh, you know, if, if we can grow 20% per quarter in revenue, that would be great. That would catch everyone's attention. So until the numbers tell me otherwise, yes, I'm 100% on board. I'm going to keep nibbling and building my positions. So there's some other information that I would like to share with you. So let's just go ahead and go to the slides. We'll take a look at that. And, um, and then we'll go ahead and close this out. All right, guys, let's take a look at the slides. So let's go ahead and kick this off. As you know, bad, last week was a bad week, and the week started off with a Gold Panda's article about the uh, Humble's uh, 2020 uh, annual report. And rightfully so, he pointed out some, some things that any and everyone needs to be concerned with. And what happened was Brian Foote, uh, did respond to it. You know, he sent out this tweet and, you know, he seen that we were concerned about the Series B preferred shares and he gave us a, his promise, uh, his commitment to not selling any of those personal shares for the entirety of calendar year 2021 and 2022. So we don't have to worry about him diluting our shares until the end of 2022, but that's only 45%. There's another 55% out there. So there's a lot of authorized uh, uh, shares of humble stocks out there. Take a look at this here. This here is from the otcmarkets.com. Here, I was able to see that the authorized shares is a total of 7.4 billion shares. The authorized shares are the maximum number of shares a company is allowed to issue to investors as laid out in articles of incorporation. Now, that's different. Authorized shares is definitely different than outstanding shares. Outstanding shares, we have a total of uh, 974 million outstanding shares. So we've got a lot of authorized shares that can be sent down or converted down to that outstanding shares. And outstanding shares are the actual shares issued or sold to investors from the available number of authorized shares. So there's a lot out there. 
uh, rightfully so. I don't think this is this is not uh, nothing unusual, especially when you start talking dealing with a startup company uh, going through the OTC route. I'm pretty sure that if we look. We can probably see some startup companies that actually went the traditional IPO. We're going to be in the same situation. The key key thing there is that you're going to have to you're going to have to have strong revenue numbers uh, numbers on your financials to make this uh, worth the valuation, the market cap of this particular stock. And I think that is coming. I'm hoping that's that that's going to be the case. Now this is the uh, the channel that I looked at that, that really opened my eyes and gave me good a very good education when it can when it comes to comes to the market makers and how they they can legally short a stock and not have the stocks to cover them. I've always thought that that uh, you couldn't do that. I thought that it was illegal. However, for market makers, they play by a, a totally different set of rules. Uh, definitely, if you get a chance, take a look at Mike Jones. Uh, YouTube channel, especially this one here, Penny Stock Manipulation. He did some great research. Thanks a, 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 a bunch for that, Mike. I really appreciate that. Now, one of the things that he did point out here and that uh, I just wanted to share with you, you know, uh, there are the market makers out there and the biggest one out there when it comes to the OTC market is Citadel Securities. I want you guys to take a look at the, the dollar volume the share volume and the number of trades. Uh, they're leading the pack. Second place is a distant second place. So uh, they're the ones, they're ones that, that's out there. And also when you watch this video, he's gonna also show you some of the, the numbers when it comes to Humble as well. So now Wall Street also spooked the whole market. You know, all major indexes when this came out with uh uh, President Biden's tax, tax plan came out. All three major industries took a dive. And trust me, when that happens, it's definitely going to uh, affect the OTC market as well. Now, this is how we ended up the week. We closed out Friday at $1.65. We opened the day at one seventy two. As you can see, definitely an ugly week by looking at this chart. We started out the week at $2.00. 36 cents and ended at 165. Look at the volume though on Friday. The volume is starting to dry up. I believe that a lot of the sellers are done doing their, their selling. So uh, we were way below the uh, our 10 day average volume. You know, 7 million uh, was on Friday. We were averaging 20, over 20 million. And the trend line, I really didn't need to show you guys this. You already know that uh, the trend line for the week was on a, it was a, definitely a decline. Here's a side-by-side -side of formerly and humble. As you know, as go humble, you'll see it also reflected in Fortly. This here is uh, an update on the, uh, the short volume ratio. As you can see on Friday, uh, the number was the lowest it's been in quite some time, 0.34. That's why I feel that I think all the sellers are just about done. And what's more than likely going to happen now, we're going to see the, the price of Humble increase. And as the price of Humble increase, we're going to get those short sellers coming back into the market. So we're going to be in this very volatile pattern for quite some time. Uh, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. However, I... I I believe that we're still going to be, this is giving us uh, uh, buying opportunities to increase our shares. I know that's what I'm doing. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, we're still at the top of the list when it comes to the, the most searched stocks within the last 72 hours. Uh, in the last four to five weeks that I've been tracking this, we've always been within the top five. So that's where we're at. And here is my current position. As you can see from last week, I did buy a, some more humble and forwardly on the 19th and 20th. And I am down 47% in humble and 30% in forwardly. I'm not selling. 
I didn't put uh, trailing stop loss or anything, mainly because uh, this is going to be I'm a long I'm this is going to be a long play uh, for me. Uh, I'm going to be in here for the long term unless the numbers tells tells me otherwise. But I really cannot see our financial reports once those quarterly starts to hit that uh, it's going to reflect that uh, we're not generating large sums of, of money and it's going to get better quarter after quarter as the brand awareness increase and people realize what's going on out there when people start seeing the results of the ETXs, when the money starts flowing in from the NFTs. Uh, hey, like I said, buying opportunities, I will continue to nibble to increase my overall position when it comes to Humble. So I hope you guys got some useful information from this. If so, hit that like, subscribe, and notification button. And I'm pretty sure that next week is going to be a much better week than uh, this last previous week. Let's hope so. All right. Until then, guys, I will see you on Sunday, if not sooner. Take care. Bye-bye.